Welcome to Mojo at the Movies. I'm Eric, and joining me today, a very special guest, is actually a man who's usually behind the camera. Uh, it's our esteemed director, Manny. He's here with us. He's a huge, huge comic book fan and a huge fan of superhero movies. And, uh, well, we're talking about what movie today? We're talking about Black Panther, the right. movie I forced you to take me to. <laughs> I pretty much gave you no option to. <laughs> Kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming. Uh, and the movie, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. It was pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you as a huge fan of comics uh, and a huge fan of superheroes, what did you think? One thing I love when you go into a comic book movie like this is when they get the lore and the world right. Mm -hmm. And walking into this not knowing much about Black Panther, I was completely immersed in a world and I kind of believed everything. I loved him when he showed up in Civil War and mm -hmm. I loved him in this. I thought everything was really well handled. Chadwick Boseman, amazing performance out of Isn't Black he? Panther. And everybody in the overall movie, all their characters, everything was just spot on amazing. Well, credit has to go to Ryan Coogler, the director. Yes, so here's sure. a guy who started, he kind of came out of nowhere in Fruitvale Station and then really cemented his, uh, you know, his reputation as a go-to guy with Creed, which was a great movie. Which was a great movie. Yeah. And also, I'm pretty sure, helped Michael B. Jordan get the, the spot in this one. Yeah, well, Michael B. Jordan has been in all his movies at this point, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, and so Ryan Coogler really created uh, this this world that existed on paper in the comics, but to you know to, to then translate that to the big screen and to work it such that it's it, it, it works as a standalone movie, but it also fits in the grander universe, you know, exactly. the Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe, and giving us like iconic locations from that world, mm -hmm. like uh, Warriors Falls, which is where the king kind of does his trials and his challenges, and just that was something really like really nice to see. The way it was set up, the color palette in this movie oh, is beautiful. So yeah. different from like this. Uh, a lot of the Phase Two Marvel movies had like this dark gray kind of like depressive color palette, and the first one was very comic booky. You know, every movie had like a theme. Like we had a Norse mythology theme with uh, Thor. We had the techie kind of like blue and teal color palette with Iron Man. Then we got this vibrant. World War II epic with Captain America. And then, and then Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy. And then Guardians of the Galaxy was just like attack on the senses with the music. And in this mu movie too, the music in this movie is... Well, Kendrick Lamar, I think, was responsible for... It's not all his music, but he kind of executive produced the, uh, the soundtrack. Great job. Um, and, you know, you mentioned the, the, the look of the movie. And uh, especially that scene when they're on the falls, and yeah. it just you know you're totally immersed in it. Uh, I gotta also talk about the cast. I mean, not only Chadwick Boseman, who does uh, you know in my mind he is Black Panther. Yeah. Nobody else could have ever been or will be a better Black Panther. But I mean, you've got a great cast. You've got Angela Bassett. You've got Michael B. Jordan, who we named, who people are saying are. Or is the you know the, the the ultimate Marvel villain? Yeah, well, uh, he plays a character called Killmonger, which is very important in the Black Panther lore. Mm -hmm. And I find what they did with that character, obviously, like in all movies, they took a few liberties with him, but they really made him one of the most memorable characters. And he's kind of like all his actions are justified for him from his perspective, and the way they do his character arc kind of really opens up this door that where you question: Is he really wrong, or is he really right? Or is this the way it's got to go right, down? Right, there was a lot of nuances. There's a lot of nuances in this movie. It but makes you think. One thing is for sure. This is a very important movie in that it's empowering. It's a positive representation. You know, uh, I came out of there feeling empowered, and I felt good about it, but I can only imagine what it's like for... Uh, for the black community to have this superhero character, we're not talking about Blade, who was a, a uh, you know, he was a vampire or, or Spawn, or Spawn, you know, these dark characters. Born from hell. This guy is basically, you know, he's the king of an unconquered African nation, and he's more, uh, more skilled than Batman, uh, probably more technologically advanced than Iron Man, and. You know, I, I'm reading tweets by people who are saying, finally, I feel like I can identify with this character. So this movie resonated very deeply with me, and I'm sure it will with a general audience. But for the black community, I mean, this is a huge moment because it's, it's inspiring. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a new wave of positivity. And it's not banging you over the head with it and kind of like trying to get it in there. It's like it just exists and everything is and it's amazing it's the way the whole the whole way the whole film was depicted and the way they interact with the rest of the world like Wakanda as a as such an amazing superpower as it the way it like 
interacts with everything else around it is pretty, it's very well executed. And I think you mentioned an interesting point that, um, you know, this was, this was entertaining. It, it, was, it didn't hit you over the head. It wasn't cloaking its message in uh, some kind of overwrought, overdramatic thing. It's a blockbuster. It's fun. And the message is the movie itself. Yes. The fact that we can have fun and we can be positive and, and everybody can feel represented. Um, uh, and, and you also, you know, when we were talking before, you mentioned women and, and you know... The, the women the... are badass in this movie. <laughs> My favorite character is actually Okoye, who is the general of the Dori Milaj, which is, is like so Black good. Panther's uh, personal bodyguard, which he doesn't need, but it's cool that he has it. And she just, every scene she's in, she owns it, and I was blown away. I think I was telling you in the theater, I'm like, that's my favorite character. And, She's my favorite. Like, and Lupita Nyong'o, she also, I mean, all amazing, the women in this yeah. movie, it's almost like they were cooler than the guys. Big uh, they, they actually were way Black cooler Panther's, than the guys. Black uh, Panther's sister, Shiri, was so smart, right. which in my books, I think she's smarter than Tony Stark, which I think I would love to see maybe in Infinity War if we could see those two characters kind of talk tech compare the technology from Wakanda and what uh, Steve Rogers, uh, Steve Rogers, that's Captain America, right. uh, Tony Stark has been doing. Uh, I don't know, I'm pretty excited for that. Well, that's the thing is that we don't want to give away any spoilers, right? This is, yeah. so there's so much that we want to say there's that we so can't much, say. There's so much, but we can. But I'm wondering how you think this fits into the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because, I mean, essentially, Black Panther was one of the original Avengers. He's one of like, the early Avengers, not one of the originals, but he's one of the earlier ones. And I just love the fact that now in Marvel we're seeing phase three and we're kind of seeing which heroes will kind of like head and be in charge of phase three and have bigger roles. Obviously phase one was the Iron Man, Thor and uh, Captain America. And in this one we see that they're putting a lot of concentration on Ant-Man is playing a bigger role. Right. Uh, obviously Black Panther is playing a bigger role. The Guardians are playing a bigger role. And we're getting Captain Marvel soon. So I think that they're, they're just expanding the universe and they've built us up these characters, but they've given us such satisfying character arcs with the other ones that it's not necessary for us to try to like hold on. Like I think where DC is kind of weak in that aspect is that Batman everything. Batman has to be in everything. If there's no Batman, there's no DC universe, right? Right. Which I find is a bit silly. And here it's like, here's an amazing character. Here's us taking care and giving this character what he deserves. And he's just as relatable as a Captain America or a Tony Stark right. or a Thor. You know, like, it's amazing. And it, it fits into the cinematic universe perfectly. It doesn't bounce back in time. It's such a perfect little chapter. And even if you cut out everything that we learned in Civil War and everything else, the movie on its own is It's a standalone, solid. yes, it's absolutely. It's very solid. Uh, it opens up to a sequel, uh, everything, you know? Like, obviously these movies are done in three. It's not a big surprise that, oh, there might be another one. There's going to be another one. You know? So, you know, if you think about it, Marvel has been, have been very smart because they could have, as you said, just gone with their A-listers. But they've managed to, with Guardians of the Galaxy, with Ant-Man, with this movie, they've created as, uh, as entertaining, if not more entertaining, you know, these offshoots that I think are, are going to expand the universe that much more. Yeah, big time. I mean... This is the next step that Marvel's taking that is, they're pretty much saying like, we understand our characters, we believe in our characters, and we believe in giving good stories, good adventures, just like when you pick up a comic book and you can connect with any one of these movies and they're gonna be just as entertaining as the last movie. Sometimes we'll get a Thor, the second Thor, but I mean, it's forgivable because right. they come back. And then you get strong. Thor Ragnarok. And, and then we get Ragnarok right. or we get a, a Winter Soldier, which is, my favorite movie of every Marvel movie that was made is that one. So where does this fit into, can, can I ask you that? Of, sure. of, of all the Marvel movies, where does Black Panther fit in for you? I think it's a strong, like, I think it's like a second. Whoa! I think it's like Whoa. a second. As much as I enjoyed the entire, like, the whole, I think it's like a balance between this mm -hmm. and Age of Ultron for me was one of my favorites because Ultron is one of my favorite type of Marvel villains because he's kind of like a mistake villain who just realized he's better than everybody, and he's like, you know what, I'm just gonna take over. You guys seem to be doing a horrible job at being uh, <laughs> mankind, so I'm gonna take over. I'm still waiting for them to get the Hulk right. But listen, there's, there's so much stuff that we wanna say, but we don't wanna spoil anything, so you know, go check out the movie, let us know what you think in the comments, um, and we'll be back with more. Thanks, Manny. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, guys. I am ready. My heart don't skip a beat even when hard times bust the needle.